Hi, this is Cynthia Ortiz. These are the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. It is May 2022. May 20th. The year is 2022. And we do the disclaimer first. Use allegedly nobody's been found guilty in a court of law yet. Mr. Perry is a stalker hacker peeper. And he's violating the RICO Act all over the place. He's into organized crime. Allegedly. And he killed a cop. Allegedly. And then he's trying to force me to lie for him about that. Allegedly. So, and apply the but for standard. But for us having to document every little f- criminal act he does, um, as they tell you to do in connecting the dots on the National Victims Resource Center and for his criminal case that the 40 police officers helping me keep catching what he's trying to do for the first time in his life. Um, before that, we wouldn't do the podcast. I'm busy. I have a shit ton of stuff I'd rather be doing. And apply the reasonable, prudent individual standard. That's what I'm being. And I'm doing this because law enforcement told me to do it and because we need this stopped. Everybody's sick and tired of it. I don't think he understands what people say. Everybody's sick and tired of you and your problems and your drama and troublemaking and loss and cruelty and suffering. And that doesn't mean keep doing it and hope you can hide it better. What that means is when you're told on, you're being stopped, Mr. Perry. Someone else is doing it for you. That's never happened to y'all before we understand. We have a quote from one of your guys. It's a recording, two of them, that are pretty significant. I'm quoting your guy. When Charles pesters her and takes her money, things do not go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've not seen before. When Charles contacts her and she's told him not to. And his con the way he does it, is the weirdest, creepiest, fucked up way on the planet. No normal person could even think of if they had to. Only a Looney Tune could come up with the shit he does to try to contact me. And it's, it's disgusting. In 12 years, sir, you don't get a date. You don't get cooperation. You don't get information. You get told on and caught and told on and caught. And it's like that's what you want. Also, I assert all my constitutional rights. The First Amendment. I have the right to do what I'm doing. You don't have the right to obstruct justice. You're about to get charged with that too. We're pissed. You shut up. Do not contact me. I hate it. Listen to the words. Understand the words. Look at the history over the past 12 years. You're not going to get a date with me, weirdo. You're not. You're, I'm sorry. You're way beneath me. Way far. So embarrassing beneath me. It is not even funny. Four millions. I would die before I'd walk in a room with you on my arm. There's no way. You repulse me. You repulse even prisoners. There is not one sexy thing about a peeping Tom who has no life. He just sits on his fat, lazy ass, perverting around all day, bothering and bothering and bothering and bothering and bothering. And I have the right to tell people what you're doing to me. It's a criminal act. Every single thing you do all day is. I'm being raped right now in the privacy of my home. I don't get to do even what TikTok girl does and go to our house where you're where the stalker's not. You're always bothering me. And I told you to cut it the hell out. Cut it the fuck out. And the more you do it, the more you get told on. You're not getting a date, dumbass. You're creepy. For 12 years, there's never been a date. There's never going to be a date. You're creepy. You embarrass me. You're stupid. You're stupid. You embarrass me. Don't contact me. I hate it. And the more you do it, the more we get. So I guess Mr. Perry called up here and wanted me pulled over to verify I have insurance. So here, you're not going to pull me over. You, call, you, Everybody knows you want me pulled over. Everybody knows it. You've been saying it for months and months and months. We wanted Cynthia pulled over so we could verify her make and model of her car, her driver's license, and her insurance. Here's my insurance. It tripled in cost because you interfered with a contract. So for a little bit, like a week or two, I didn't have insurance. It ended on April 26th. On April 26th, you had the guy hit me on like the 16th or 15th of April or March and get out and go, call the cops. It was still in force. And then he made a big thing. Uh, Your insurance canceled. 
Is it? I gave you the card for my Camry. I don't own the Camry. So how would you know? You don't even have the right information. Because when I'm looking at your vehicle and you're telling me I hit you, what I know is you can't back into somebody and hit their bumper with the side of your car. If you're going to back into somebody, you're going to hit the side of their car with your bumper. And I told the guy, send me a text picture of the damage on your car. Now watch. I'll never hear from him again because he's full of shit. Sure as shit, that's what happened. So here's my insurance. It's confirmed. State Farm is one of the contracts you interfered with intentionally so you could take my car. You wanted my car impounded. You know how I know that? You guys were recorded talking about it. So the other thing, remember, that we've said that they were recorded, Charles Perry and his little club of weirdo, sex weirdos, child pornographers. Charles, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear when you contact me anyway after I've told you I don't want to hear from you. We're all sick and tired of hearing from you. Nobody cares what you think. You were not asked. You were told to butt out, shut up, and go away. And when you do it anyway, when he bothers her, when he pesters her and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen you've, we've not seen before. We've never had one figure out we had cameras in their house and that we were causing their problems or sue us or solve a, crime, a murder we committed to cover it all up. And yet I have. You aren't getting it. You're not getting it. You're slow. You're stupid. It's embarrassing to me. I wouldn't walk in a room with you for millions. You shouldn't have to say it more than once. Huntington's disease causes delusion and paranoia. So then I have a problem with my PayPal account. All of a sudden I can't get in it. So I call the customer service people and they got me in it. Then I'm trying to provide some updated information. They won't let me provide the updated information. I've got this, so the, so the lady goes, you've got a security lock on your account. And I go, why? I mean, I can get in my account. Why do I have a security lock on it? She says, um, because I, I don't know. There's some new information. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to provide the new information because you need to update it. You need updates, right? Did you want to have the old information or did you want to have the new information? Okay, well, we want the new information. What's the new information? I give it to her over the phone. Yep, I can't do it. I can't give it. I can't get it to the system to take the new information. She goes, so let me, uh, I'm going to ask you some security questions. And uh, if you answer it right, then it'll unlock my system. If you answer it incorrectly, it won't unlock my system. She says, have you gone by, which name have you gone by? Alfred, Carolina, Veronica, something else, something else, a couple other names I'd never heard before. And I said, none of the above. Wrong answer, she says. I go, wrong answer? Yep, I can't unlock your account. I said, no, I've never had another name but the one I'm using. Even my dancer name, Bianca, it was only used in a, in a strip club. It's never been used to do conduct official business. See, the official business that I conduct is my name, my legal name. Only in a strip club am I using a fake name. Or if I meet some weirdo in a bar and I, and I think maybe he works for you. I'm not going to give my real name. But there's no official business conducted with any name other than my legal name. And so... Uh, that, so I'm like explaining to this woman, uh, I, you, you got it wrong. I go, listen, first of all, can I speak to an American? Cause you don't seem to understand English. I need somebody that will understand what I'm saying. I, I'm not, I'm not being racist here, but I'm very frustrated with uh, the, uh, the language barrier and my, in your inability to understand what the hell I'm saying. And I can't understand you either. Please put an American on the phone or a supervisor. I finally had a scream at her literally to get her to put a supervisor on the phone. I got the run around, this is PayPal. I get the run around, the run around, the run around, and I'm finally like, get a fucking supervisor right now. So she gets a supervisor on, and the guy's like, well, we have the security question that you didn't answer right. We gave you some names and asked, which name have you gone by in the past? And I go, none of them. And it concerns me that you would have those names on your file. I've not used any of those names. I use the name you have. This is banking. You got my money. 
He says, um, well, the federal government gave us these names. I said, no, the federal government did not give you those names. The federal government has the same name you have. And he goes, well, it's associated with the phone number that you have. And I go, oh, okay. So what you're telling me, PayPal guy, is that you got a phone number and the FTC has names of the owners of the phone number who owned the phone before I got it. They had the phone number. They canceled those phone numbers. They canceled their accounts. And then, and then the phone company that I signed up with uh, uh, gave the number to me, and now I have it. I'm supposed to psychically give you a name of someone who owned the phone before me. Is that correct? Um, these are You agreed to the terms and conditions. I go, wait, 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 wait. You're telling me this is a security question to get into confirm it's me to get into my account. What does the people who owned my phone before I did that I don't know from Adam have to do with proving I am who I say who my account I'm the right person. I'm not identif this is not identity theft. That is me. This is me and it's my account. What is giving you a name of somebody who owned the number before I have it? Prove that it's me. He just got real quiet. He couldn't answer me. I said, listen, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. He goes, listen, the only thing I can do is you wait 24 hours, you call back. So I wasted an hour of my time arguing with that guy about why it's not going to prove I am the account holder by trying to give them a name of a person who had my phone number before I had it that I can't possibly know that information. I don't get a list from the FTC. I was pissed. So, with that said, while I'm doing all that, Perry's typing in my phone, I'll fix the problem if you lie. Will you? So, who did I call? Because your guys were also recorded asking, how does she call the cops? All these girls, we've cloned their phones, and they're, they think they're calling out. They're actually just calling us. So which of your guys did I just have that conversation with? And the last thing I said to him, by the way, is you get your shit together. And I hung up on him. It is not verifying I'm the account holder by asking me to name the person who had the phone number I have before I had it. Alfred had my phone number. Alfred canceled his phone account. Now the number's unassigned. I go in and I set up service and they give me Alfred's old number. And I'm supposed to know Alfred. And that he owns the phone number I have now. That's not how you prove I am. The person who, own, who holds the account. So what is it you wanted out of that, Mr. Perry? That you had that guy ask that question. And who was I really talking to? Was it PayPal? Or was it one of your minions? The guys who kiss your ass. Well, you shit yourself and then get that all over their face. You tell me. That was an awfully strange question for PayPal to ask me. I'm arguing with the guy for a fucking hour. And this is why everybody hates your guts. Everything's a problem. Everything's drama. You're a troublemaker. What should have taken two seconds took hour, an hour of my time. And you think you could get a date with me? You're off your nut. You're off your nut. You want me pulled over to confirm my insurance? Here's my motherfucking insurance, Mr. Perry. There's my insurance. The contract that I did have that cost me a, a quarter of this, you interfered with it intentionally so that you could take my car. Everyone knows you want to take my car. You never shut up about it. That's why you're in going to jail. Interference with contracts and commerce with intent to coerce. Getting me on the phone by cloning my phone and redirecting phone calls to your people is a criminal act too. That's another thing you'll be charged for. Look, I don't know which cops or which people you have on the payroll and I don't care. You know what? I'm quoting what you just said. I know your little, co your little freaky Jason code words. Daycare. Hansel and Gretel. We can't do Hansel and Gretel with her. We can't play Ratatouille with her. We can't play Rapunzel or Rumpelstiltskin with her. That Rumpelstiltskin is trying to get me to say my real name. You read that? I didn't call PayPal. Did I call your guy? Yep, that's illegal. Get the fuck out of my phone. This, I got a new phone because you wouldn't leave the old phone away. 
uh, a loan. That was another contract you interfered with. Remember, I did say several weeks ago, my payment was late. I made payment arrangements. I was supposed to go work so I could make money to pay it. My guy tells me, they are going to fuck with you all night. They will frustrate the hell out of you. You're not going to make any money. And it is not worth it for you to do that. I've got, you're tired. I've got guys here working that are exhausted. Everybody's getting, you know, irritated with each other. And everybody needs some time off. And when you work, we got to call guys in who are off sometimes. Because we got to watch you. We got to watch Charles Perry. We got to watch the people in Oklahoma he's hired to fuck with you. Everybody who orders from you, Uber Eats, Grubhub or DoorDash, wherever you're delivering. We're watching all of that all the time. So we have to staff use more people and our, our guys are, di are dying for a day off so are you let it go we'll charge them with interfering with that contract too because you shouldn't have had to make a payment arrangement you only did because he's interfering with your money and we know that and he's going to do it all night and he will frustrate the living hell out of you so just take a day off and let it go so I did and then I got a new phone. And that was Alfred's phone, apparently. Or Veronica's or Carolina's. And uh, so, and then PayPal. Th that's another one. You don't have the right to do that to me. You are taking up too much of my time. And when you do that, sir, you get everybody mad at you. And then we get more information. So when we quote you, don't fucking ask me how we found out. You asked for that because when you contact me in any way shape or form when you invade my privacy and buddy and when you interfere with contracts and attempt to coerce me by by causing economic loss or property loss you are going to jail you act like you have no idea what i'm saying it's easy cause and effect and it's been that way since the mcnamara email of 2015 every fucking day I knew Mike was drugged before anybody else said it. I said it in January. I said it in January. Because you killed Chief Miller. I said it in January. I knew in January I got more firm and um, uh, you know, aggressive in my communications with the Florida State's Attorney. Why is Mr. Neely still sitting in jail? Where is your probable cause? I'm looking at him, and there's not a damn thing on him that looks like he was in a fight. Mr. Barney Fife, I don't have patience for stupid people. Or corrupt. I don't. What? Somebody was joking around about that the other day. Don't make her explain it to you. She's not a special ed teacher. She doesn't have paints, finger paints, and puppets and crayons. You need to keep up with her. She's not going to slow down for you. Yeah. Thank you that you get me. Thank you that you get me. You get your hand out of my wallet, you sick motherfucker. Get out of my phone. You're not supposed to know I have a PayPal account. And yet you do. How many times were the phone calls made? Here's where she put this money. Here's where she deposited that money. Not your business, is it, you creepster? When you do that, don't get mad when we quote you. We want her pulled over so we can verify she's got insurance. Right? Get the helicopter up. Right, that one? You pissed everybody off. My guys get to work harder, and we get what you just said. And don't fucking ask me how. I don't even know how. I don't even care. You know what I care about? Is you're trying to hurt me, and they're making you stop. Why does he want to hurt her? One of the guys in Lubbock said, Charles Perry will come in our office, and he'll want to do something to hurt Cynthia. Why the hell does he always want to hurt her? And then and he'll ask if he can do X, Y, Z, and we'll explain to him, no, you can't do X, Y, Z. That's illegal. And we'll sit down and explain to him why he can't do that. And he'll act like he understands, and he'll leave, and he'll come back a day or two later and ask the exact same question. We got to drop everything. Here we go again. You're wasting people's time. We got to drop everything we're doing and explain the whole thing to him over and all over again. Very irritating. And I'm busy. I don't have time for this. My office is not a nursing home. It's like he has got Alzheimer's. Get some help. And get the fuck out of my life. 
when you contact me, when you cause a problem for me, when I lose one penny or one minute of my time because you did something illegal that caused that to happen, you interfere with one single contract or one thing of commerce, you are going to be charged for that. Now listen to the words and understand them. And I'm told about it before most of the time, beforehand. How many times have I said it beforehand? Like Mike Neely was drugged and the McNamara email and the harassment email over and the shoe print. We got to get our shoe print. And then, and then you, you guys were told, no, if she, if you're trying to alter her appearance and the, and the, in the actual murderer's appearance, so they look more alike. We didn't look alike on the day of the murder, did we? Now you want to do it. Because we found this girl kind of looks like Cynthia. We're going to frame Cynthia for that. I need a smear campaign. I'm running for office again. I can't announce my candidacy unless she's in jail. Charles, you were recorded saying that. Charles, you were recorded. Which law enforcement agency has the recording, Charles, of you saying, I need her back in jail so I can announce my candidacy and we're going to make her apologize. We're going to make her apologize. 50 fucking recordings how you're going to make me apologize. And I said, no, you're not. She'll testify for herself and then you're fucked. Well, we can't let it go to trial. When we can't let her appeal, and we can't let this get out to the public, recording after recording after recording after recording after recording of your crimes, and you guys act like you have no idea what I'm saying right now. You don't, you don't understand what people are saying to you because you got some kind of mental Huntington's disease disorder, paranoia, delusion, something, something. All of you have it. There's, there's a big group of you. You know why this is taking so long? Because it's not just one guy stalking. It's a group of you. I got a group of... I'm gang stalked. And guess what I've done with that? No one has caught your crime like me. And the guy's helping me. I can't do it by myself. Guys that can do shit like this. Tell me you want me pulled over to verify my insurance. There it is. Barney Fife. See it? Consider it confirmed. Not that it's any of your business. Not that it's any of your... In, it went, my premium went skyrocketed because Perry interfered with the first one and everyone knew that. Because you've been trying to get me pulled over for months, you said. Four months. Mr. Perry just typed in my computer. Yes, we were. My guys, said, my guys record everything you do in my phone, everything you do on my computer. So, thank you. You are admitted to committing a criminal act. Get the fuck out of my life, bitch. In 12 years, look at your results, dumbass. There's never a date. You don't even get information. <coughs> Mr. Perry, there's never a date. I'm never going to date you. Stick to the rivers and the streams that you're used to and stop chasing waterfalls you'll never get. You disgust me. You're not good enough for me. You're a creepy motherfucking weirdo. You're a cop killer. I come from four generations of police. You come anywhere near me, you better have a football helmet on because I will kick your ass. You won't get up. You will not get up. There's not going to be a hug. I'm not going to wait to see. Listen, I won't let you hug me. You will never touch me. That's my wish. He's typing in my phone. Yes, I'll hug you. No, you will not. I will kick your ass. I'm not going to wait to see what murder weapon you got on you. I don't go where you are. I've moved twice to get away from you. I've sued you three times. I've completely changed my life. Fuck off, bitch. Fuck off. You are not wanted. You're not wanted. You're not loved. You're committing a crime. Go away. Act like a man. Move on. You don't have a choice. It's the law. In 12 years, you've not gotten a date you never will. You're pathetic. You're embarrassing me. You're pathetic. You're not going to touch me. I'll kick your ass. You're never going to touch me. I will kick your ass. Now somebody 
Remind him that I've said that now for 12 years. Every day. He's rejected. And then we get, and he do, you can't even get information. But you're told on and caught and told on and caught and told on and caught. Like never before in your lives. You act like you have no idea what I'm saying. It's so embarrassing. So embarrassing. So whoever I called at PayPal, that was a fuck up. And that's what gets us more information. I knew all of a sudden you, need, you want me pulled over to confirm my insurance. There it is, Barney Fife. There it is. It's confirmed, all right? Not that it's any of your business. It's, it's just more harassment. I have insurance. Mr. Perry's been harassing me all day. Type it in my phone. Go work. Go DoorDash. Go DoorDash. Go DoorDash. Yep, last time you co coerced somebody, uh, look what happened. Look, see, you want my car. Oh gosh, and you, then you still want my car. And, 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 then you, and then you wrecked it like a zillion times, right? You want my car. You like coercing. You like coercing. We all know. We get it. You made your point. Listen, you say it for us once and we get it. We're not mental slows like you. We don't have Alzheimer's. We don't have Huntington's disease. When you say it once, we remember it. We keep that shit. It's not one recording when you keep talking about it over and over and over. Not realizing you've been caught already on that. Specifically. You've been caught already on it all day. DoorDash. Go DoorDash. Go DoorDash. Go DoorDash. Because you want me pulled over to confirm my insurance. Here it is, dipshit. Winnie pesters her and takes her money. Things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen like not before. Like, oh gosh, now she knows about that. Yep, the yellow brick road and Hansel and Gretel and Rapunzel. Pen the tail on the donkey. All your little, you know, your little weirdo names. Pin the tail on the donkey. Pin the tail on the donkey. Right? Do I need to repeat it again? We know. You don't get information. You don't get a date. 12 years, you do the same thing every day. But you know what, what does happen? You get told on and caught. As a man thinketh, so shall he be. You must want to be caught. You're not loved. You're not wanted. You don't have a date. You don't. Ha you can't figure out how to get women to like you. If you want somebody to go on a date with you, they got to like you. And I don't. You're just a creepy little stalker like Neil. When he pesters her and takes her money, things don't go well for us. We're seeing things happen we've never seen before. And Mr. Perry has no fucking idea what that word, what those words mean. You can tell by the way he acts. He has no idea. He's not able to look back on 12 years of history every fucking day and go, I, I'm provoking the wrong thing here. I'm not getting the results I was, wa I was wanting. He can't properly assess outcomes, anticipate outcomes, properly assess and assimilate information, and then make... A reasonable, prudent individual's decision. So, wh wh who did I call? Did I call PayPal or you? What the fuck was that? Get out of my bank accounts, Mr. Perry. Because when you don't, my guys get pissed at you and then we get more information. It's cause and effect. I don't know why you guys are such mental slows you can't see it by now. Six-year-old got it the third time it happened. Years ago. It's every day. When you fuck with me, you get caught. Why is that? Why is it when you do it to me, all of a sudden, you get told on and caught? And I know before, not after. It's not an afterthought to explain something away. Shoe print, ringtone. You wanted that? You wanted my ringtone? You wanted my shoe print? And then, but you didn't get it because I said it first, didn't I? Because 40 cops are watching me and you. And if I was a murderer, they would, they would have had me in jail themselves. They don't need your help. We're catching you. See, this is how we know there's a disconnect in your mind that you have no idea what's happening. You can't, you can't even function normally. Because here's the thing, Mr. Perry. If you're having to ask me who told on me, then, and who's helping you, then, but then you keep doing the same thing that, may, that gets them all pissed off, then it, you, there's a disconnect as to why are they telling on you and who are they telling, who in law enforcement has all those recordings and what courtroom are they already being played in to get a investigatory order like a wiretap or something. So you're in a lot of trouble. Maybe you ought to leave me alone. 
complete disconnect and putting those things together that a little child could put together all by themselves. And we have to tell you over and over and over. It's still not clicking for you. It goes right over your head. You're stupid. I don't think you have a disease. I think you're just stupid. It's embarrassing to me. I say it once. You don't play in my sandbox if it takes more than that. Sorry. Sure shit, not getting a date. Ever. You can't understand normal people's words. I don't want to be around you. I don't have any patience for it. I don't have any. I'm used to being around very astute people. I've worked with surgeons and federally elected officials all my life. And cops. Really good cops. I don't have any patience for your bullshit and your mental slow and having to repeat myself over and over and you still don't get it. Look at the results you're getting. You're not getting a date. You're not getting information. You're never going to get a date with me, Perry. Listen, stop typing in my computer and get out of it and shut up. I said no. I don't want you. I don't want you. You're not loved. You're not wanted. You're rejected every day. I don't want you, Neil. I don't want you, weirdo. You stay away from me. You stay away from me. You're rejected. And you're told on. And why don't you understand that? You can't keep up with anybody else. Anybody. Uh, and it's embarrassing. Mr. Perry, you embarrass me. I don't think you're a turn on. You're a peeping Tom. Women are repulsed by peeping Toms. I just said that. I've said that over and over and over and over. Our shrink is like, he doesn't like women. Women hate being peeped on. That's rape. It's just fucking rape. She doesn't say f the F word. She said it's rape. He's raping her in her house every day. He's taking her money. He's got a control balance issue, a mommy issue, which she said, she says more professional words, control balance issue, mommy issues, it's a control, stalking is about control. If you cared about me, you would want me to be happy even if it's not with you. You don't give a shit about me. If you would, if you gave a shit about me, you'd get out of my privacy, butt out of my business. You, you do what women like if you like women. You don't do that. You do everything women hate. It's in 12 years. You can't get a date. You can't do it. You get sued. You're about to go to jail. You can't control yourself. When you do something that's a criminal act, that means a whole lot of people decided we don't like it when somebody does that. So we're going to make it a crime. In all 50 states, it's a crime to stalk, hack, and peep, and coerce, and obstruct justice. And you can't stop yourself and commit perjury. You can't stop yourself, can you? And you've not been caught this much in your life, and you go right back at it. So, for the record, everybody, Charles Perry wants me to go work tonight in DoorDash. He's coercing and coaxing, just like he did Officer Neely. See, how did you know Mike Neely had to be coaxed to Pensacola? Because he didn't want to go. He had to be begged to go. Mr. Perry's uh, t telling me, after I've been subpoenaed to testify, he tells me. He wanted to see if I would tell him what I was going to say in court. And then when I didn't, he just won't let me in court. You suborn perjury. Right? U.S. versus Strom. Vreeland. Those, those two cases established when you conceal a material fact that could change the outcome. That's perjury. You do it all the time. You're big on that concealment thing, aren't you? And the coaxing. So he, I guess he wanted me pulled over to verify I have insurance. There it is, Mr. Perry and Barney Fife. There's my insurance, Perry. So you wanted me pulled over. So everybody know for the record, Mr. Perry is again in my phone hacking me, typing, go work, go DoorDash, contacting me after I've told him, do not contact me. And for sure, shit, don't contact me by hack. Don't peep. Don't bother me. Don't bother me. I don't want you anywhere near me. I don't want to hear it. You you will not shut up, and we're all sick of hearing it. And you're getting told on because you're pissing me off. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to hear from you. I don't care what you think. We're all tired of hearing what you think. You're a burden. You're an imposition. Everybody's sick and tired of dealing with. So... Because he did that, my guys start looking, and they, well, they want to confirm your insurance. They want to, well, it's harassment. 
as harassment. How many times have you guys been recorded? We need her pulled over to verify her, her license and her car. Over and over and over and over. When he pesters her, when he bothers me, when he invades my privacy, when he causes problems, and I just had to spend an hour on the phone with fucking PayPal answering a question there's no way I could have the, uh, I could know. To unlo that doesn't prov prove I am who I say I am. It doesn't prove shit. And, uh, you know, my phone calls better go to who I intend for them to go to. Get out of my phone, all of you. All of you are caught more than you have ever been caught in your fucking pathetic ass lives. When you fucked with me. And it's been that way every day for years. Are you all on something? Do you guys, you know, what are you on? That you can't get it. That you can't keep up with everybody else in figuring shit out. Cause and effect. When we do this crap to her. All of a sudden what we have hidden all these years. It's all out every, all over the place. Right? You little kid games. There was another one they just talked about a minute ago. And I can't remember what it was now. But it was another kid game. It was like Rapunzel, Ratatouille, uh, Rumpelstiltskin, Pin the Tail on the Donkey, <laughs> uh, Hansel and Gretel. There's another one they were just talking about just a minute ago. Now I can't remember the name of it, but my guys have it. They got the recording. Yep. The Yellow Brick Road. Like uh, Wizard of Oz. Uh, shit, what was the one they were just talking about? Hang on. They're busy. It'll come to us later. It'll, we'll get it in a minute. Anyways, I don't have time to keep doing podcasts because Mr. Perry can't understand a word I'm saying. Acts like he has no idea what I'm saying. Nursing home, dude. All of you need to be in a nursing home. I, it's like talking to an infant. I, it, it's frustrating. Mr. Perry, you're not going to get a date with me ever. You don't get information when you start making phone calls trying to find these guys helping me. You get told on, though. Don't you? So this little murder that you kept trying to frame me for, that you needed my shoe print, I've already discussed it, Perry. We did, on the day of the murder, we didn't look anything alike. My hair's lighter than hers. My skin's lighter than hers. And I'm thin. She's quite a bit heavier than me. So that ruled out the need for my shoe print, didn't it? And you're caught. You don't get information. You just get told on. And we all knew Mike was drugged months before it was confirmed by first responders. And we know about your little apology letter and all this, uh, the, Mac, the McNamara email. I wrote an apology letter so when I false arrest her again, she can sit there and rot or read my apology letter and do as I say. We do not have slavery in this country anymore, sir. You're a misogynist pig. Gender discrimination is as bad as racism. You need help. Leave me alone! Please! Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said, let me talk to you for two minutes. It doesn't matter if it's two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes. If she said no, no means no. Rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently. Rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior. Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude.